Hey everyone, today let's just go ahead and discuss something about Vercel and AWS. So just to get you guys on the same page, if you don't know what Vercel is, it's a very popular hosting service provider, sort of, which created Next.js as well. So this is the same company which created Next.js, which is maintaining Next.js as well. And they are also a hosting provider, but not only for just Next.js, but a variety of other tech stacks as well. AWS, on the other hand, you guys know what it is. So if you guys have been following me on Twitter, the link is in description, you know that I tweeted this a little while ago that Codam has bypassed the, you know, just, just exhausted the free quota of the Vercel bandwidth, and I'm probably going to move it on AWS serverless and I said it very confidently but there's a twist let's get into AWS versus Vercel exactly and what I chose finally so to give you a little background on CodeDamp's architecture this is not a full video on CodeDamp's architecture you can think of CodeDamp as three services at the moment or three microservices the first one is the front end that is coded with Next.js and has been hosted on Vercel so far. The second one is the GraphQL API server, which is independently hosted on DigitalOcean right now. And the third one is again uh, the runner service, which executes your code on the playground. So Next.js and backend are separate services. And why that is a choice, why that is a scalable choice, we're gonna maybe cover that in a different video. But to remember, what you have to remember in this video is that this analysis of pricing and everything would be done on the fact that Next.js does not or uses maybe like a couple of uh, API endpoints only. The backend, the heavy lifting or maybe like, you know, the computation part happens on the GraphQL servers, not on Next.js end. So I'm using Next.js to deliver the full website, um, generate as much static pages as I could deliver them from Vercel CDN and it has been working well so far. But after crossing the free tier 100 GB limit, Next.js or rather Vercel needs you to upgrade their tier. Now I was pretty confident that hey let's just go ahead and switch to AWS, manage everything ourselves, why the hell not. But there are a few caveats to this. Number one, pricing. And AWS sucks so hard when it comes to pricing. Compare Vercel and AWS CloudFront one-on-one. -on -one. AWS CloudFront, the cheapest option you can get is a US uh, CDN located in US and it costs you 0.085 cents per gigabyte of data transfer. So if you are using your Next.js project behind CloudFront and you're delivering everything, you know, if I am hitting 100 gigabytes of data transfer per month, just like I'm doing with Vercel, it cost me 8.5 US dollar just for the data transfer alone. This does not include the S3 storage fees or the EC2 computation fees yet. It is just data transfer alone. And this is just something which Vercel provides for free, right? So that sucks. But it sucks even more when you go and multiply it by 10, that is 1000 GB or one terabyte of data. So one TB of data transfer will cost you $85. Um, and it sucks because on Vercel, if you're on the paid plan, they give you for $20, they give you one terabyte of data transfer. Now you might say that, hey, Mehul, you're not gonna use one terabyte of data transfer anyway. The code damn website is not gonna use that. But even if you think about it, if you, even if you are hitting 200, 300 gigabytes of data transfer, then also it becomes expensive than hosting it on AWS S3 and CloudFront in front of it. So the first biggest thing which was a huge blow was the pricing, right? If you are not doing huge amount of data transfers with AWS, you will not get discounted pricing. And this is like one of the biggest things of AWS for small startups, which are, you know, they are not too aggressive. I mean, they're not like transferring 40, 50 terabytes of data a month, but they are not even, you know, that small, one, two GB of data. So for um, a, size, a startup size like CodeDam, 
it is best to have that $20 cap for one terabyte of data. So this is why in the pricing department, I considered Versal as the winning factor because looking at the growth of CodeDam and the amount of traffic we are receiving right now, we are easily going to exceed 200, 250, 300 gigabytes of data. Maybe in not if in not in a couple of weeks, then in a month. So that is a smart move for now. The second point with AWS was the infrastructure management. Now see that AWS is infrastructure as a service. That means that sure, you're gonna have a lot of control, but you know, as the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. And uh, as somebody who's trying to grow and outreach and just, just make sure a lot of people know about your product, spending a lot of time on infrastructures, configuring everything, making sure nothing blows up, kind of defeats the purpose of running a business, right? I want to help a lot of people with CodeDam, I want to create a lot of content, I want to extend a lot of, uh, you know, just extend the reach of the platform to a lot of people, I want to get a lot of creators on board, but if I'm spending a lot of time in AWS console or maybe like with the serverless YAML configuration files, and uh, trust me, I'm not, I'm no cloud expert, so I have to learn those stuff as well. That defeats the purpose of, uh, you know, just, just running a business, right? You don't really want to code all day long. So to deploy Next.js on AWS, there are fantastic solutions which exist right now. I checked in depth about serverless Next.js, which is a fantastic effort from the community to, um, you know, just publish your Next.js application completely on AWS infrastructure using Lambda Edge for the API function computation and the server-side rendering, Cloudflare and uh, not really Cloudflare, CloudFront and S3 for storing assets and everything is automated and deployable. But again, caveats exist here. First of all, it has to actively support the new features which Next.js has been rolling out and it has just recently supported image component in the alpha um, sort of branch. So yeah, I mean, next year's and Versal and you know, given that Versal has already raised a lot of money, these guys are moving pretty fast. And if you want the best of next year's, if you want all the features, then probably Versal is the company to look for. AWS is fine if you are a big enterprise with a lot of people and you guys know what you're doing. But for me, for, um, you know, code damn, running a small startup right now and with not a lot of people um i would prefer simplicity and uh, you know just offloading my headache of managing serverless and you know all that stuff to a company like versal for a very low price in fact even profitable not even i don't really have to pay anything extra compared to aws pricing so that seems like a very great option in in my case so again, no doubt that in the ease of use, the points again goes to Versal. Another reason of not using AWS but Versal was because I was using a lot of projects in Next.js which are subdomains of CodeDAM. Um, so it would have been more serverless configurations, more management, more, um, you know, getting deep into AWS, which to be honest, I do not have a lot of time right now. I do not have a lot of time to learn the networking sites and you know depth of how AWS operates. I would rather want to focus more on the business logic of uh, you know getting things done at CodeDam right now than maybe like uh, configuring AWS. For AWS, I can always get somebody who's an expert instead of me learning the whole thing right now. I could just probably focus on where I'm best at. So yeah, final verdict. CodeDam is staying on Versal. I have upgraded to Versal Pro that cost me $20 a month for a single person seat. Now this is a tricky part of Versal. They do not charge, uh, I mean, they do charge you on the usage, that's fine. But they also charge you $20 for a single user on a single, um, you know, seat or whatever they want to call it. Plus the simple functionalities like password protecting your site or um, I don't know, a couple of more features, they cost you like $1,500. So like analytics cost you $10, which is like half the price of a single seat. So there are things about pricing model of Versal again, which I do not like, 
but for me the maximum use for Vercel would be the Vercel CDN and the data transfer which is like a huge saver for um, 20 bucks you get a one terabyte limit and you can even increase a request and increase from the support so let's see how that goes so yeah guys that's pretty much it for this video i hope you learned something new i hope you understood something new let me know what you think about aws versus Vercel. do you prefer aws for next.js installations if yes why is that the reason i would love to know that in the comments below because to be fair i could not see any single reason why would you use aws if you are somebody who's using next.js is in the range of you know about 200 300 400 gigabytes of data transfer a month and has a dedicated backend infrastructure you, that means you're just using next.js like i am so do you have any reason for using it on aws if yes let's talk if no give me a thumbs up in the comments so that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video